or IXP update. Maybe uh, it is on the third page of the files, and you can easily find IXP update template. That is the name of the file. So please download it and uh, fill in the form and send it to me, the toyama.jpnav at gmail.com. And I will compile that information later, and I will oh, make a presentation or introduce your IXs oh, in the peering forum that's session three, okay? Okay, so oh, shall we start the first oh, the presentation? The first presentation is uh, oh, the Taiwan peering scene by William Lu uh, of the Chief Telecom. Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm back. <laughs> I'm William again. But uh, I think I'm the first uh, Taiwanese to ever uh, do the presentation in Apricot. Maybe it's because uh, Taiwan is not, uh, there are not so many ISPs. And the many people who, um, who, are, uh, who, who might only come to Taiwan for the food or for sightseeing. But uh, the biggest ISP in Taiwan is uh, Hainé, which is, uh, belongs to Zhonghua uh, Telecom Group, which is also our um, mother company. Okay, we are a chief. But, uh, um, but, uh, but I, I think they, they are not very open to uh, like a, a free peering or, or any um, low cost <laughs> peering. So I, I, I have to uh, do the presentation uh, for uh, the rest of uh, the, the Taiwanese and including the Hainan, the, the, the Zhonghua group. So, okay, um, this is um, not my personal show, so I, 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 I just put the picture so that you know that um, my weight can fluctuate, okay? But the peering price actually gets down, <laughs> okay? From uh, seven thousand uh, five hundred NT dollar, which is around uh, two fifty US per Mac, to like in, within ten years to uh, three four nine, which is around eleven or just ten bucks. Okay. I know it's still high. Don't blame me. I'm, you know, I, I will tell you uh, uh, the details about how we generate these uh, numbers uh, by the our government, but. Uh, um, I'm just sharing the information here. Okay. Sorry. Um. Okay. Okay. Um, firstly, I would like to uh, let you know very brief uh, about myself. I, I was in Chief Telecom a long time ago, starting 1999. So I witnessed the Taiwan's uh, tel uh, telecom uh, liberalization, okay? And we start to build the, ID, the data center for the first commerce, which at that time was uh, MCI WorldCom and Equant. Right now, they are Verizon and Orange. Things changed. Um, so I was the project manager, uh, pro project manager and the sales. Um, at that time, and I, I'm in charge of uh, around 16 megawatts of the IDC build. And then I joined a CQI to develop a smart cabinet, which is very kind of popular here right now from uh, like Ericsson or many other um, um, equipment providers. But at, but at that time, it's still very early. I think it's too early. so. It, didn't work out. Um, and then I joined Singtel as a channel manager, and then I rejoined uh, Chief at uh, 2005 until now. Okay. Um, because I was one well, of the, the, the first to um, actually build and, um, and deeply understand and sell at IEC in Taiwan. So the, in Taiwan, they, they also call me a little prince, but uh, you know, 
I'm not the prince at all. <laughs> okay, uh, who is Chief Telecom? Um, we were founded in uh, 1991, and we are the biggest uh, carrier neutral data center in Taiwan with uh, over uh, 360,000 square feet of floor space and uh, 30 megawatts of capacity in three IDC buildings. Um, we are the first and the number one IDC to customer build, and uh, we can custom build and lease the IDC to global carriers, um, ISPs and CDNs, e-commerce and enterprises. Okay, so we provide uh, uh, mainly uh, IDC service, the VoIP, global VPN, IPLC, and the domestic local loops uh, wholesale, uh, and uh, a little bit cloud, and also we can help uh, wh whoever wants to do something in Taiwan to apply for a company registration and the license, telecom license. Um, and we operate the only uh, neutral and open internet exchange in tai Taiwan, TPIX, uh, which I mentioned in the morning. Uh, but I, in these uh, slides, I will uh, also introduce the other IX in Taiwan. Uh, we were acquired by Zhonghua in, 19, uh, in 2006, which is almost 10 years ago. Um, but uh, here I say uh, this is chief, not Zhonghua. The reason I say that is um, even though they are our, the, our mother company, but uh, because uh, they are the dominant one in Taiwan, okay? So they are not neutral, carry neutral, but uh, they invest in, in chief in order to get an arm to do something they cannot do in, um, in their own IDC or in their own, under their own policy, okay? Oh, th those are the three, sorry, three buildings. Uh, we have in Taipei City. Okay, uh, I think I, I will cover the following uh, five topics, but um, some of them will be very detailed, so I will not, I'm not government, and I, I don't want to uh, waste a lot of time for yours, but uh, the materials is there, so uh, I will just uh, give you some uh, major things I want to share. Uh, right now, the Taiwan, uh, the regulation is on uh, the, the agency's uh, NCC, which is founded in 2006, National Communication Commission. Um, but at the year of 1996, which is the most important year of uh, Taiwan regulation, liberalization, at that time we passed the three laws of telecom and separate the DGT, the, you know, the, the old, old age, uh, 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 government uh, department uh, of telecom and uh, and the mails, okay, and separate the DGT and CHT Zhonghua Telecom and uh, and uh, pass the telecom law to allow a Type One and Type Two license can be applied. So um, two years later, Time Mobile, uh, Firestone, they started the, their business, and then after that, TWNIC and TWIA was founded. Okay, and then at year 2000, as I mentioned, the summary license is opened. That's when the most of the international carriers start to come to Taiwan. Okay, and, um, and, and, and so on, there are some mergers, and, um, and at year 2007, the, the, the mobile, Taiwan domestic mobile company and the physical company, they're starting to merge. Okay, so Tile Mobile merged TFN, APT merged uh, APBW, and then another merge, 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 merge. Okay, so um, right now, because uh, many people who um, who may only know the names, but uh, their AS will be quite confusing. So here it is. I I, I just put some uh, AS belongs to the same group here, so that you can understand easily. Uh, under Zhonghua Group, there are one, two, three, four, five, five, except Chief. Chief has uh, three as well. And uh, Tire Mobile, they have um, four, Firestone Group, they have uh, one, two, three, four, five, five ASs, and APT. And uh, also our government, the, the TANE, the, the, the academic network, and ASN, and the 
uh, TWN, uh, they have three. And then many of the universities, they have their own ASs. So here it is. Okay. Uh, speaking of the market uh, status, I think Taiwan uh, internet uh, uh, environment is still, I, I shouldn't use this word, but uh, it's still primitive, I think. <laughs> uh, it's not that open. So um, the NCC is trying to do something. So here's the, their website and uh, their policies and their goals and their beliefs, okay? Um, I also believe they are trying to do this, but uh, Taiwan is a very political, you know, sensitive environment. So every time the government, the, the government change, the mindset change, then I'm not sure whether they will keep on um, reinforcing their policy or not. But we have a lot of operators here. Uh, there are 77 type one operators. There are four, the bigger, b biggest ones are the Zhonghua, and then Taiwan Mobile, Firestone, NCIC. They are the same group, and ABG. Another, uh, others mostly are uh, local cable providers or MSOs, okay? Uh, and of course, 3G providers and the four submarine, private submarine cable providers. Of course, the red, like us, we, we are in part of this consortium, but um, they are, the private cables, and and they are all in our IDC, <laughs> the, the private submarines. Okay. And they are uh, in total f uh, 432 operate, uh, type two operators, and um, most of them are the internet access uh, providers, okay. the local ISPs. So, okay, it comes to the, the pricing, um, because of course we can have, um, Every ISP can have, have its own policy of uh, setting up the price or even uh, free peering with each other. But the the still everyone is look following Zhonghua Telecom steps. So the the government tries to try try to uh, uh, lower the price, control the market. But in another way, Zhonghua is still uh, I think 60, uh, sorry 30 percent owned by the government. So actually, he's make, uh, Zhonghua is making money for the government. So it's a kind of conflict. But NCC used the X value, which I think is uh, uh, very common in the, the rest of the world. Uh, we use, uh, they, they use X value to control the price. So, um, but, but before 2007, there is a X value, but it always uh, equals to the the delta of CPI, okay? So uh, it's actually no change, no pressure for, for, uh, for the ISPs or type ones to lower the price. But uh, since uh, 2007, there are uh, X value, which is higher than the delta of CPI. So from the formula, you can see, it's always uh, a pressure to drop the price by maybe, normally the CPI is like two, two or three percent, so it's always like um, another two or three percent price down, governed by the NCC, okay? So, so um, that's why we can see uh, there are some um, appearing price changes from the, like I mentioned, uh, seven, uh, two, 250 US dollar per Mac in 1995 to right now three, Four nine, which is uh, eleven uh, per Mac, but during that period, actually there are some something happened in uh, April of uh, two thousand nine. Uh, Taiwan Mobile refused to pay the the peering charge, and then CHE limits the the peering uh, with uh, Taiwan Mobile to two gig, and then five million users were impacted, and that's a big thing. And then that forced the government to look, really look into it and negotiate with Zhonghua. So, well, it helps. Uh, so uh, I think NCC will continue to use X value to push the high net and other ISPs to lower their price, okay? Um, 
I think the ARPU will 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 still decrease, but uh, the the ratio of uh, data will be increased. I will show the details later. And right now, the ISPs traffic with HiNet uh, chief is the biggest among even bigger than uh, you know other type ones like Tower Mobile and, and Firestone. But but I actually the reason is. Like I mentioned, uh, Zhonghua is willing to give us chief uh, a group company as uh, some some uh, flexibilities to burst and to connect with uh, Zhonghua. So uh, there are some ISPs or MSOs they don't want to um, to do business directly because of the pricing, the policy issue. They do it through chief. Okay. Um, and then the total traffic to MSOs is around 200 gigs, and international bandwidth uh, from Taiwan to the globe, global is uh, one 1,600 gigs, around that. Okay. So uh, as you can see, Hainan is uh, still the biggest, even not just domestic, but also for the international bandwidth. So Hainan, uh, their their mindset or their policy is still important. Okay, uh, so here are some um, um, official uh, numbers from the NCC, which I take from their presentation. Uh, so the mobile mobile phone still occupies uh, eight, uh, almost 60% of the total telecom revenue uh, in 2014, and uh, and uh, the the. Data communication revenue is uh, 60, uh, 46 percent of the total telecom revenue, and mobile data service revenue is also a um, um, major portion. And it's it's growing rapidly. So here there are there are four four uh, four series of numbers, but uh, I think the most important are the mobile broadband subscriber. Is uh, 19 million in Taiwan, and the fixed broadband subscriber is uh, sorry, I should point this way. <laughs> sorry, 7.4 million. And the penetration rate, actually, Taiwan is uh, famous for over 100 percent penetration of mobile, you know, cell phone rate. Long, long time ago, in 2000. And, uh, more than 10 years ago. Everyone has uh, two or three mobile numbers. But uh, the, for the mobile broadband, subscriber panel retention rate is also pretty high. It's uh, 81%. That means everyone is using um, mobile data and 31% um, and of uh, fixed broadband. And for the fixed broadband subscribers, you can see that uh, the by technology, the, uh, the major part still is the FTTX, okay, uh, which is also the the most important um, products that ISPs in Taiwan is promoting. Uh, but as you can see, others represent uh, which okay this way, P, uh, public wireless. Uh, land and uh, uh, list lines. They are also growing. So the government is trying to do something, offering um, public uh, wireless. Um, but I have to say the speed is not so good. <laughs> okay, and the okay, the, the internet access via 3G and 4G. As you can see, 4G is rapidly taking taking off. And uh, even my my father, you know, he who doesn't use any data plan, he just uh, told me that he he went to a, a Zhonghua Telecom uh, store and uh, he was pushed to transfer to a 4G uh, because they offer him a free phone. <laughs> I don't know what 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 will he do with with it, but um, but but it's a good thing, okay, as the telecom people here. Okay, and our pool for mobile services, as you can see, the um, the ratio for 3G is, of course, increasing. Okay, 
and the 4G output is the highest. So I think that's why everyone wants to push push for 4G. And uh, we in Taiwan we have uh, all you can eat program, and it's uh, the everyone says it will they will terminate it. They they will stop offering the all you can eat, but it seems it will it will continues continue to offer that. Okay. Okay. There, here is uh, some the 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 server's growth and the uh, internet host go, uh, uh, growth and the number of uh, .tw domain names. I think. Um, it drops naturally because uh, nobody really need to uh, fix the state stick to uh, .tw uh, uh, anymore. It, right now, there are more options. Okay, um, so uh, speaking of the IXs in Taiwan, the biggest one is the Twix. Okay, uh, but even the biggest one, well, I should. I shouldn't use biggest because their traffic is not so big. Their members, well, not, not so many. Uh, but, but still, they are, right now, uh, it's the biggest one. Uh, they are uh, operated by HiNet, which should be a, you know, a neutral, neutral platform. Uh, but HiNet, they are also doing it for free, so you know, <laughs> what to complain. But um, the traffic is actually dropping. Okay, uh, and uh, to join Hynet, you have a you have to have a Type Two license, of course, the Taiwan company registration, Type Two license, and others. Okay, the AS, those are very f uh, normal things. But um, one of the Type One peer manager told me that ninety nine percent of the purpose to join Twix is actually for join for high net traffic because they op they offer some uh, free high net in uh, uh, Twix. Okay, these are the member list. This is the member list, and the and the we chief is also one of the uh, Twix member. Okay, this is their charge. Um, but uh, look out! Um, the, they 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 just uh, announced a new policy on the remark two, which may, many people may may not know. But uh, some of our customers who want to uh, join IX in Taiwan, and of course, well, the first choice should be Twix. But uh, because of the remark two, the the new policy, they start because. Um, somehow, Hyundai decided to limit their their bandwidth to uh, 100 meg if they if the other the member doesn't buy any uh, pay peering from Hynet. So you only can have a 100 meg by default, which is you know I don't know how to say it, but uh, <laughs> it's their policy. But if you buy from them, they will offer another one third of the Paid bandwidth to you in Twix. Okay, so uh, other than the port, you also need to co-locate in in Hynet in Twix, and also pay the cross connect, pay the bring the local loop inside because most of them normally is not yet uh, inside of uh, Hynet, so there there got to be a local loop inside, and the local loop is also very expensive. I think that's why um, um, it's not very you know, productive to uh, join uh, Twix uh, unless you you want to take chance to 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 uh, get some free high net, but it's always jammed. Um, they also have a free peering. Wow. Um, in a dominant uh, ISPs, you know, they offer free peering, but there are six criteria, and uh, I have studied them. It's almost impossible to meet. <laughs> so, and the tricky point is, he also said that if all the six conditions for free peering, free peering are met, then uh, which ASM to free peer with, with you, you know? Will still be negotiated. 
connected uh, separately. So they might use another AS. I don't know. So I think somehow it's telling you that no free peering. Okay, but that's why I think that's a good thing for us, you know, because their policy um, bring the opportunity for growth for, uh, to chief to TPX. Okay, uh, of course, like I mentioned, there's no qualifications required, and uh, our members already uh, 20, which is um, almost uh, the same. And the, the traffic right now, I have to admit, it's not. It's not big, it's only around 30 gigs, but we are growing, as you can see. Not like, high, not like uh, Twix, they are you know, going down. Uh, here's the member list, and uh, actually we already you know, in progress, I think it's okay to share with you that Hurricane and Cloudflare and Akamai, they are all connecting to uh, TPIX. And like, like uh, the kind gentleman from Yahoo said, they are already connected in uh, Taiwan with us. Actually, all the information can be found in Peering DB. Okay, and also more and more MSOs, whoever has a, has an AS or not, or originally they don't, they might not have because MSOs use our the ISPs IPs to to give it to their users. So may, they may not have OS, but uh, they, they, they might ask us to apply for them or consult us to apply the AS for them. And uh, here you can see, uh, I, here, sorry. <laughs> the I, I, IQE, IQE is actually a big content from China, okay? So it's kind of sensitive because like I mentioned in the morning, Taiwan is not China, but the, they are, we are the same culture. So many of the Taiwanese love to watch the videos, contents from China. Uh, so, but, but because of the political issue, our government don't allow, don't allow uh, Chinese to enter into the so-called telecom facility. So data center may be okay, but then there must be no connectivity. That is why um, some China, uh, Chinese uh, carriers or, or content providers, they are here in Taiwan, but they want to uh, hide be behind, like, like IQE is actually using our above name, Taiwan's another AS number, okay. But, but it's them and, uh, and it's very important. So in Taiwan, we are always having some ways to, you know, to survive, to, um, to follow the regulation, but also uh, give the, our customers some, some way to provide service here. Okay, so uh, our pricing is simple because mo most of the, our members are already co-located in our IDC, so no, no need of uh, co-location, no need of cross-connect, we will do it, just the port charge. And of course, we, we are small, so we offer uh, free trial period, <laughs> but uh, that, that is negotiable. <laughs> okay, there are another two ISs, IX in Taiwan. One is uh, EBX by APT, but you know, it, it's I can I can find the link, but uh, but I don't know the member, and uh, the traffic not found. No, so I uh, I think I think everyone of you are very professional. You can see from here from the pricing. Actually, they are selling um, their transit. It's not uh, really operating at IX. Another one is uh, TWNAP by a safe count who, who is the, a pager service provider and now it's a ISR enterprise for enterprise voice provider. But of course, there's no information at all. So I, I should say Twix and uh, uh, TPIs are the two IXs which is still uh, operationing. Okay, so uh, I think most of you will be very interested in how we do um, interconnection and peerings 
in Taiwan domestically. Okay. I just use this, uh, this very simple diagram. The red arrows means uh, party uh, B pays to party A. Okay. The green arrow means they appear. Maybe free, most of, the, most of the time will be free, but maybe some very minor uh, charges. But here you can see that uh, Zhonghua, everybody needs to pay to them. And uh, they, if you want to even buy from Zhonghua, you have to connect to Twix. Okay, so yeah, it's uh, their way of doing things. But the rest, uh, like Telmobile, Firestone, APT, they, they pair with each other. I, uh, in my, um, from my information, they are uh, free, free peers. And uh, it's very interesting that APT buy from Chief for the uh, CHT's, uh, Zhonghua's uh, uh, traffic. Uh, but we, we buy from Firestone. So I think the, the, the thing is, it's very natural for even for a place like Taiwan that the biggest trying to charge the second and the third, and the, the, the second and third try to charge uh, from smaller ISPs or MSOs like us. That is why we try to uh, promote TPIX, because everyone has a chance not to pay um, for unreasonable charge if they can do the fear peering, even the smaller I, um, ISPs or MSOs or mobile operators who only have maybe um, 30 or, or uh, uh, sorry, uh, three or four million uh, users or, or even less. Maybe their traffic is not so big, but with uh, uh, joining an IX, a real open IX in Taiwan, they can have the, a way to cost down and to also uh, have a better quality, okay? That is wha what we are doing. Okay, so, um, okay, now it's the last uh, topic. Um, like I mentioned, Taiwan is a very political, <laughs> you know, uh, society. So the, the new, the, there, there was a new uh, president uh, election just finished, and the, the the DPP, the new part, the the, the party, uh, Democratic Progress Party, I think, will wins, and uh, they are more uh, closer to U.S. than to China. So I think the pol political wise, the the any relationship or any uh, open to China might change or you no. Know, become more conservative. And uh, the paid peering price will continue to drop, but f I think five to 10% annually is still you know, not, 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 the, not, not a big drop. That is why um, we are trying to uh, build a TPIs, okay? And also, <laughs> uh, the third point, we are, because we are running out of uh, space in our IDC, but uh, we are trying to build our first floor with a 600 kilowatt capacity uh, into transform uh, from uh, office to IDC. Um, okay, so um, I should say TPX or, or Taiwan ISPs needs your help, okay? Because if you um, don't come to Taiwan or if you come to Taiwan, but you only choose to for the cost issue or for something you only put inside of Zhonghua, then the rest of the ISPs or MSOs will be also be blocked or be charged uh, unreasonably. But if you can extend a, a point uh, into the biggest uh, carry neutral IDC here <laughs> and join the TBIX, then we got a chance to change Taiwan uh, IP environment together and make it more healthier. And so we need your help. Okay, so this is the last page. Uh, yeah, I, I know, I know uh, Taiwan is famous for food. So I, I, I use this one to attract you <laughs> all come to Taiwan and enjoy the, the delicious food. Wow, I'm hungry.
again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Any, qu any questions? Wow. <laughs> It's Walt from Hurricane Electric. I um, would like to ask you one question. When we do come to Taipei, will you help us get interconnection and peering with other incumbents? So, so sorry? When we come to Taipei, will you actually help interface with the other ISPs so that we can get peering? Is that something you will help us to do? Uh, uh, you mean you, you, you interface with the other ISPs? Let me rephrase. So I don't speak... Um, Chinese, would you be able to help us um, introduce us to other ISPs that are on your exchange? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Actually, that is what we are doing because most of the ISPs or many of our members, their English is not so good. So actually, we are helping them to build the keying the information on peering DB for them. Thank so you. of course, we will connect you. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? No? It's okay? So, oh, the, my question is uh, now, the last APIX meeting, or TWIX people oh, made a presentation, and they said that they are uh, uh, neutral internet exchanges. Uh, of course, uh, Chunga Telecom, uh, is not peer with others, almost, yeah. S but then uh, they say that in other uh, participants can uh, freely peer with each other. So, is that okay? okay. Oh. My understanding is okay? Yeah, yeah. I, I should say that uh, because if everyone uh, in Twix uh, want to peer with each other, there will be extra cost. But normally, they are con already connected because Maybe they are both in chief building, or they have they are the local loop type one providers. They can build the the local loop by themselves easily without with very low cost. Mm -hmm. So most of them do the peering directly, you know, separately, outside of Twix. But yes, of course, their policy <laughs> is neutral. But you know, the purpose is mainly well. Oh, thank you. It's quite difficult. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, other questions? So one more question, just to clarify. If, if someone were to connect to Twix and not want to peer with HiNet, would they be also limited to 100 megs? Uh, that was not clear. Well, y right, that, that is not clear. Of course, you can negotiate with the rest of uh, Twix members separately, but by default, they are, they, they are not open or unlimited publi peering, public peering. That means um, you, need to, you, need, you need to negotiate with them separately. Then since you can do it elsewhere, nobody will go to Twix unless they want to connect to HiNet. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No? Okay. So thank you very much, William. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next, oh, the Arnold. Oh, from the Dekix. Oh, he will talk about an invest investigation of traffic dependencies between IXPs in failure scenarios. So, Arnold, please. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm Arnold Nippe from, from Dekix, and, and um, I give a short talk on investigation of traffic dependencies between IXPs. So um, nowadays, um, IXPs are becoming more and more valuable for interconnection between networks. And um, we have heard uh, tomorrow morning that, for example, Akamai already connects to way over 100 internet exchange points. I guess the same almost holds for, or even holds for Hurricane and Electric and other networks as, as well. So what we see is that. Um, besides transits, which still is valuable and, and most of the network needed, that um, the internet is glued together by internet exchange point. And um, uh, the 
talk is motivated by, by an incident which uh, happened in May. And uh, this leads to a question is how robust is the IXP interconnection system? Um, are the IXP somehow interrelated or are they independent of each other? And for example, what happens if an, a large IXP fails? Um, so then will the internet uh, stop to work or will no one notice it? Will it affect other IXPs? Uh, will everything go to transit and so on and so on? Um, so which triggered the, uh, actually this started and also this presentation is uh, we had an incident at a large internet exchange point last year around May and um, there was a loop of about four times 100 gig which is, is really uh, a, a lot and um, this led to that traffic was black holed and um, also because traffic was black holed some 500 of the 600 BGP sessions um, at the root servers were dropped. So what we, we see over here, where is it? No, back. You see there is a traffic drop and it, it looks like that the total traffic dropped to zero, but that's not true. This is um, related to that uh, the um, traffic collecting system of this IXP was also affected and that means uh, during the downtime there were no traffic st statistics coming in and therefore it looks like that the total traffic went to zero. So, and the question is what, which impact would you expect on other IXPs. So this is uh, the gap which is um, erased over here. This is the normal situation of another large IXP and what would you expect? So intuitively you would say okay if somewhere the traffic is going down it has to go somewhere. So the most people I've asked and also what I would have expected is that the traffic goes up. But what we have seen is that the traffic is going down at DKICS as well. So when it was not only going down by a little bit, but it decreased by, by 10%. So uh, from 2.5 terabit, it dropped by 250 gigs within five minutes uh, to 2.2 terabit. And this is something I said, this is really counterintuitive and um, uh, therefore I, I said to my research team, please look into that. Just to, to let you know that at DKIX since uh, roughly two years, um, we also have a small team of meanwhile five people who do mainly research stuff. So what I found out, we already have corporations with several universities and from the studies which the universities did, we have found out that the Internet Exchange Point itself, it's its own internet universe. And that's because so many networks connect over there, so many things are happening over there. So if you can imagine, for example, if you take the largest internet exchange in the world by networks like um, PTT in, in Sao Paulo in, in Brazil or M6 in Amsterdam and, and links in, in London, there are between 700 and 800 networks. And there is also a very dense peering between them. You observe roughly 70,000 to 100,000 peering connections going across uh, these switching fabrics. So it's, it's really worth to look into more it also from a research perspective. When, uh, I guess there are also researchers over here. If you are interested in working with us, please talk to me later on.
So if we try to correlate uh, or look into this in more detail, we see that uh, at um, 1222, which is uh, marked here as, as one over there, the loop was created and uh, traffic was black holed. And you almost see immediately after that, the traffic is going down. At 1225, uh, almost all of the peering session to the route service dropped, and that is where we see the, the minimum over here. Then, uh, only a couple of minutes later, and in total, the uh, really excellent network team of, of M6 was able to remove the loop within less than, than 10 minutes. We see that traffic is uh, going up again, and even also uh, at 12.40, the, when the BTP sessions to the route server are back again, all our traffic at DKIX was at the same level as before. So, and now you see, okay, instead of seeing an increase in traffic, we see a decrease in traffic. So, and you question yourself, what could be the reasons for this behavior? What are the dependencies between these two ISPs? And um, after a sh short while of, of thinking, we found three answers so far. The first is um, related to remote peerings. So re by remote peerings, I mean you have one router which is physically connected to the same or to two distinct INSPs, um, either both by uh, remote peerings, or one is by local uh, interconnect, and the other is by remote peering. But still, then you would have, of course, if one IXP is affected, this immediately also affects um, the peering or the BGP session on the same router. What might happen is that because of all the recalculations, peering, direct peering relationships go down, peering, the router has to recalculate BGP, it's coming up again, going down again. And so eventually this leads to also that um, BGP sessions to the other fabric are dropped. So we, what we could identify is only four customers uh, which were affected uh, at DKIX Frankfurt, and the drop in traffic is almost neglectable. This is only about one gigabit, so um, of a total of 240 gigabit. This is ne neglectable, but we still were able to identify it. So the other, um, which would be more interesting, is is atometric routing paths. So what uh, do I mean by that? If we see a traffic a source and, a, and, and the destination, so customers requesting uh, content from that server, and one way, so eastbound, it goes uh, via the blue IXPs, and westbound, it goes via the red IXP. And of course, if either of these two IXP have a, a problem, then the UDP or TCP connection is affected, and this leads to retransmission, um, and that of course then the traffic uh, will be affected. So, and, and therefore we, we try to concentrate it on, on this, and try to look into this more in this asymmetric routing path. And to find out how many of the networks connected to um, both IXPs could be affected by that, we concentrated on the RIPE Atlas measurement. So the RIPE Atlas measurement is a set of, I do not know how many, thousands of probes, really small probes which uh, are connected all over the world, and you are able, if you are 
using these probes to do your own measurements across it. And that's what we did. We took the RIPE Atlas probes and we found out that um, we have a fair share of ASs connected to both uh, DKIX in Frankfurt and Amsterdam in Amsterdam. This is uh, roughly to 40 to 50 percent of uh, the uh, customer base. And uh, what we were looking into, then peerings, which could identify at DKIX with the traffic drop more than 200 megabit in DKIX. This was about 180. And um, from these IASs, uh, hosting a RIPE Atlas Pro, this was finally 170. And if you do the intersection uh, of all these connections, um, we find 50 AS to AS connections. And what we then did is try to identify asymmetric routing between uh, these ASs. And what we found out that 38% of all these AS to S connection will have at least one asymmetric uh, IX pass. So you, because routing from AS1 to ASB or, or AS2 does not always find or to follow the same path because you have uh, a lot of exit points in your ACE path, we concentrated on at least that we find one path which is at the metric. So this were 38% and um, we found out that 8% of um, all the ASS connection didn't traverse uh, an IXP at all. Um, this might be that they also are somehow interconnected, maybe in the some city, but do not necessarily go, of course, across the IXP. The traffic impact on that is roughly 30 gigabits, which we could really uh, assign to this asymmetric routing. And if we look into what we call asymmetric routing paths, we find out, you see, we did the same measurement, not only between uh, DKIX and, and AMSIX and, but also between DKIX and, and LINX in London and AMSIX and LINX. And you see, respectively, the blue one is the relationship between DKIX and AMSIX, the lighter green one between DKIX and LINX, and the more darker green one between AMSIX and uh, LINX. So, what is noticeable is, of course, is that there is a high share of asymmetric routing paths between DKIX and AMSIX. It's almost double of uh, the, the other ones. So we did not yet find out what's the reason for that, um, because there is no, at least for us, there was no easy explanation for that. So if you look uh, more into um, the impact details. Now we see, you do not see, this is not AS numbers, as you may uh, guess in the first time, but it shares in megabit per second. We try to um, assign this to network types, source ASs with uh, traffic loss greater 5% on destination ASs with traffic loss uh, greater 3%. And the networks type are according their own uh, categorization in, in peering DB, where we have content uh, networks, cable DSL, ISPs, or network service providers. And the third uh, reason we could imagine is if something happens, if uh, network performance go down, that is a layer uh, eight issue. That means users get bored, they go away, they do something else. It was also around midday in, in Europe. They say, okay, there is a problem, might be in the network. I start my, my lunchtime five minutes early or whatever. I go drink a coffee. But this is just, um, it's um, a guess, and it's hard to, to quantify, of, of course. 
Um, so what we did is more or less an investigation afterwards. This did not happen while uh, the incident took place, but um, as mentioned, we were using the RIPE Atlas measurement, and this is an active measurement also, which RIPE does all the time. And this is a graphic which shows what uh, Emil uh, from RIPE found out. And what you can see is the, the green one means data passes between ASs across uh, M6. In the normal situation, everything is green because uh, the infrastructure, the IXP infrastructure is seen. And in the moment when the incident occurred, you see that the green is almost dropping to 50%, then going down to roughly even 15%. But you, what you detect from that is that this, um, it's still operating. And interesting is also uh, that what you see still 50% of the packets are okay. That means BGP is somehow reconverging very fast. And this is the, the blue part what you see. It's probes you see which are okay, but they are not passing the infrastructure. And then of course you have a, a big share of failed uh, traffic where traffic is somehow rerouted and the infrastructure is not seen and you have only a small portion which are failing, which goes into the infrastructure but is not able to uh, go across it. So as we've seen so far, what we have seen is uh, three reasons that it might be traffic or the, for the volume dependency, this is remote peering neglectable, what we think is more interesting and which definitely uh, takes more research and to look into is other matching routing passes. And the good news from it is uh, the internet infrastructure was not really largely hit. If one or if an incident occurs, um, what uh, the takeaway is it's useful, of course, to improve re recovery time of BGP at uh, an internet exchange point, and therefore, for example, BFD might help. So otherwise, if you have a direct relationship, for example, and your peers go down, then immediately the interface also goes down, and that means the BGP kicks over. At an internet exchange, it's differently your router connects to the um, switching fabric, and as long as the port is up, there is obviously no reason for the BGP session to go down. It has to time out, and this may, may take up to 90 seconds or even more, depends on. And therefore, introducing BFD across the uh, routing infrastructure, either uh, directly set up or also introduced by, by route servers. This is uh, something we are currently also working uh, on that uh, automatically as soon as you set up a route server connection that also a BFD connection between these two parties will be established. And of course, um, looking into the relationship, traffic relationship, path relationship between IXPs helps you as a customer to design your peerings and especially to take close look in, in remote peering so that, for example, if you do remote peering that you have a separate routers. So if uh, the BGP sessions are affected that you really have big problems then you still uh, will be able to have uh, the other exchange up and running. So that's it from my side. Thank you, Arnold. So, any questions? Any questions? No? Oh. Um, 
Yeah, Joe, uh, Australian Network Operator in South Island. Um, just wondering, with your downtime, was it because of the BGP request coming in, overloading the um, router? Um, was it handling all the requests coming in? Is that why you got such an extended time, or is that... Um, so I, I hardly understand oh. you. <laughs> um, so for, I'm a little bit, not a little bit, I'm hearing impaired. Okay. Um, your um, router that's controlling your BGP um, sessions, is it overloaded when it, that time frame you've got, extended time frame, looked to be around about 15 minutes? Was that just all the requests coming in or hardware related, anything like that? So I'm, I'm sorry, I still don't get you because of, <laughs> of the, the echo or, or I don't know why. Um, the, the time frame that it took for it to come back up Okay. At the exchange, um, yeah. Yep. Okay. Was that hardware related or? This one. Yeah. Um, could it be hardware related with all the requests coming in? So no. This is of course. This is. So this is what we have seen. This is the traffic at at the other internet exchange. At our internet exchange. This is is has nothing to do with the impact at at the other. Uh, exchange. Right. You see, this is just how we try to correlate it, what we have seen in our traffic statistics to the events which took place at the other internet exchange. Right. You see? And so our internet exchange was working fine all the time, but what we've seen is it's dropping down, and uh, these one, two, three, four. These are just the timestamps and how they relate, um, relate to the traffic drop over there. Right. Does this yep. answer your question? Yep. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Okay. Any other questions? No. So, Arnold, oh, this case, oh, on another oh, IX, uh, the traffic oh, went down. And and relatedly, you and the VIX also down, but then in some cases, the other in IX down, but then your VIX is up. That because the traffic is shifted from other or IX to VIX. Do you have uh, studies such a cases? So um, we we try to get get more information. So we we talk, for example, to to links and um, uh, unfortunately. Um, so what, what in, in most internet exchange happens is they, they do aggregation. So uh, they only have these five minutes for let's say one month or two months. And um, I only said to my, my uh, research team after one or two months, please look into that. And I, I fairly, I know they started only in August and this happened in, in uh, May already. So it, it's hard really to see. It's only for us because we keep uh, the it is a more fine granulate data. So if you would have looked at, at our graph, you would not even have noticed because it's really, it's so small. So the, the answer for it is it would, would be very good um, to would have been able to see at, at for example, links, net, not, um, Nick, mix, France I X, mm -hmm. what they did notice. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. No. So no other questions? Oh, yeah. Just a quick one. You said um, <coughs> in passing that 8% of inter AS adjacencies did not pass through an exchange point. Um, it seems like a plausible number, number to me, but I'm wondering if you could elaborate on the methodology, how you determined um, uh, I assume you're looking at trace routes and looking at yep. the IP addresses. You're relating to this one? Uh, I think the slide one before this. Uh, uh, let's see. Eight, yeah, eight percent of all AS to AS connections traverse no IXP. Yeah. So was that from looking at a trace route and looking at the IP address and looking for yes. one IP address that was on yeah. a known IXP subnet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Arnold. Thank you very much.
And next, oh, the Tom Pex, uh, Pesca, oh, from uh, oh, Cloudflare, oh, making a speech about uh, interconnection in the regional markets. Hi, um, so I'm Tom from Cloudflare, and I wanted to talk a little bit today about um, interconnection in regional markets, um, how it's broken and why that's an issue for the internet. Um, I promise to keep it quick, because I know that we have real coffee in this country, and that's coming up after this break, so we'll get to there soon. Um, so a little disclaimer about the talk. I'm going to talk about Tier 1 networks, and by Tier 1, I mean a global Tier 1. I don't mean a regional Tier 1, a country-based Tier 1, anything like that. I'm also defining a tier one as an ISP or a network which doesn't have another network transiting it. I don't care if that's paid, if it's free, as long as it's not transiting it to a third uh, tier one, that's what I define as a tier one. Um, looking at primary uh, locations where tier ones interconnect, I'm, I'm ignoring several locations like Sydney where there is a number of tier ones there, but they have virtually to no network local to that location. And all of this data is based on my network's BGP view, so it's from AS1335, yours may differ. So if we look at the primary markets, and, and to look at that, you have to look at the history of, of interconnection. Um, there's just a few dots on the map where interconnection really grew in, in the earlier years and, and even still more recently. Um, I know Martin's gonna get very excited because if we look at the screen, there's another mention of PAKES. Um, it is one of the most important points in the internet where interconnection happens and is still happening today. Um, in, in these locations, like in Palo Alto or San Jose, IXPs grew around these interconnection points. The same in Frankfurt with DKIX, Amsterdam with AM6, London and Lix, Lynx and so on. And, and these are still major places where interconnection happens. Uh, and for Greg as well, uh, you notice that I've put now Equinix for PAKES. So. You're welcome. Uh, so under, understanding the current interconnection and how it looks. Um, when we look at San Jose, um, I had a look at our, some of our transit providers in that city. Um, I was only looking for their peered routes, not their customers. Um, from these transit providers, we received five full tables, but looking at three of them. So we're looking at NTTCOM, uh, Tata Communications, as well as Cogent Communications. Um, Looking at uh, several of their BGP tags, as long as we can trust them as being accurate, we're able to determine who's a peer, who's a customer, and, and where they interconnect. So looking at NTT in the Bay Area, um, using their community for peered routes, we see around 372,000 prefixes. When we combine that with their, pre their community tag for the SF Bay Area, we see 360,000 prefixes. It's around 97% of what they learn from other networks. Um, they learn locally inside that area, so that, that's very good. The same when we look at Tata Communications, so looking at their community uh, for peered routes, so non-customer routes, they have 400,000 peered routes. Looking at ones which are learnt in the Bay Area, we see 383,000, so it's around 96% of the routes exchanged locally. So again, this is, this is very good. It means that if you're single-homed to one of these carriers, you're not going to have to tr trombone traffic to exchange it to other networks, and, and that, that's very good. The same, is, again, is said with Cogent. When we look at their communities um, for their peered routes, see around 346,000 prefixes. Uh, in combination with their US-based location tag, we see around 331, uh, 37 prefixes. So that's around 97%. Um, the difference with Cogent was this was in-country as they don't have or don't expose the city-based communities directly. Um, but all of this is showing that it's a good place to interconnect. When you connect to one of these carriers in, in this city, you're going to have good internet connectivity. Um, this isn't just good for CDNs, but it's good for enterprises and, and all networks really because it keeps tr that traffic local. And, and to Arnold's point, this is something which actually helps in terms of uh, the asymmetry that may have been seen is that when is th this interconnection is so well done in these markets is you won't see traffic going to a, th a second city to, to get exchanged. Um, uh, having a look at, at uh, the US, it, it looks pretty similar across the big cities. 
Um, and this is common because of how, how the internet has been US-centric for so long and, and interconnection has grown in these cities. When we look in Europe, it's actually pretty similar. Um, we see sort of similar numbers with the exception of the tier one networks that don't actually have a presence in Europe. Um, so we see the numbers above 75%. But when you exclude AT&T, Verizon 701, and Sprint, and, and XO, if you count them or not, um, you sort of see it as the same sort of numbers. So in Amsterdam, in Frankfurt, almost all of the traffic is exchanged locally. Um, there is some funky traffic engineering that happens uh, when you have annoying customers like me and you tag your routes to not be exchanged in certain cities. You'll see it unbalances this, uh, this sort of interconnection. But for the most part, things look very, very good. So in terms of Europe and, and the US, we give them five stars for interconnection. That's good for everyone. So when we go to the secondary markets and, and start to look at regional interconnection, things start to look pretty bleak. Um, when we look at our network, we've got a lot of dots on the map which are not in primary markets, we'd say. And we're, we're discovering this more and more as we grow out. So the reason why we grow out is getting closer to the eyeballs matters. As Akamai said as well, 35 uh, milliseconds round trip time is an important number. Um, CDNs and, and other companies get better performance by getting closer to the eyeballs. And, and as well, it's also how you beat speed of light for delivery of content. Getting, getting that close so you don't need to backhaul it. But so many users are so far away from these primary markets. And when we look at, at Asia with a population of over 4 billion, it's, uh, it's an issue because so much traffic is so far away. When we, when we look at using the same methodology in, in other cities, so when we look in Tokyo, um, I look at NTT and Tata, who I interconnect with there, and using the same tests as, as done in, in the US and Europe. Um, NTT just exchanges around 45,000 prefixes, um, or around 12% of their peered routes inside Tokyo. And Tata is even less at around 30,000 prefixes and just 7.5% of their peer prefixes in Tokyo. This is despite being a large number of T1 networks actually being in the country and being in the same facilities as these networks. Um, Tokyo, of course, though, may be different because of other reasons um, which go beyond networking. So looking at, at NTT's breakdown, for routes that they exchange, I, the slides got a bit messed up there. Um, for North America, uh, sorry, from Tokyo, there's 68% uh, of their traffic is actually exchanged inside North America. So when you're going to another tier one, which may be sitting in the same building as where your interconnection is with that network, it's tromboning via the US. And even worse so, so for the 31% that's in Asia, um, most of that is, is exchanged outside of Tokyo as well. So 22% is exchanged in Singapore and around 38% is exchanged in Hong Kong. Um, with the, the less than 1% there with category name is actually Osaka. Going around the world again, so we go to Dublin and have a look at two carriers there. Looking at Cogent, they learn 452 routes in Ireland, but zero are from peers. And this is despite them being in the same building as other T1 carriers. Looking at GTT, um, they have around 2,700 prefixes in Ireland, and 2,100 of them are learned from a peer, which is actually the eyeball network in the country. Um, so this isn't good for interconnection, although connecting to GTT, at least you can reach the eyeballs in the country. And so in, in, in that city, there's almost no interconnection between tier one networks, despite, despite them being in the same building. Um, the saving grace there is INEX, um, because they're a peering platform, they allow you to reach them. But this talks about transit, not, not so much about peering there. And so in Dublin, I'd give it one star. It's not very good for interconnection. Um, back again to Asia. When we look at Singapore, uh, NTT and Tata are again, same as the other tests. NTT has around 23% uh, of peered routes exchanged in Singapore and Tata around 22. So it's a little improvement on other networks, but still it's something that needs to be improved on. Uh, but it gets bleaker when we look at local routes in Singapore. So looking towards the local ISPs, Singnet and Starhub, as seen from NTT and Tata, you can't learn more than 80% of those networks. So 20% of the eyeballs sitting inside those networks actually gets tromboned through the US. Um, this isn't good for anyone. And there's a, there's a graph showing the breakdown between the two carriers. 
So this all sounds broken. Why is this broken? Um, internet uh, connectivity for enterprises, people who aren't as, as connected as, as carriers or, or large content networks like myself, this, this can cause issues. Um, their online applications suffer. If, if they're hosting an application um, and they need to reach someone in the same market, they're adding latency. It, it doesn't work well for the, 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 the application. This can also cause economic issues because we all know that good internet leads to a good economy and that's why we're all here. Um, and it also means the network is less resilient. You don't have that interconnection in that market and so all the traffic is being tromboned somewhere else. But what makes a, a market a secondary market? Um, going back to the US, the San Francisco Bay Area has a population of around seven and a half million people. The Phoenix metropolitan area has around four and a half, maybe five million people. So does that mean cities with less than five million people are, sec are secondary and they have to suffer? Also looking at the, the distance between the cities, Los Angeles to San Jose is around 330 miles, but Los Angeles to Phoenix is 370. So is 40 miles the definition of, of becoming a secondary market? Again, in Dublin, it's got a population of around 1.8 million. So do they need to grow their population to five before they become relevant? Um, do they need to move closer to somewhere else so they get better connectivity? But, so what, what can drive this improvement? Um, is this a lack of facilities? I, I know in the case of Phoenix that there is a disconnect in, in data center market, but in Dublin it's a lot simpler. Um, are these regulatory issues? Are these other commercial issues? I know that in Asia the incumbent carriers are very, very unlikely to peer in their home markets. But with all of this, do we actually care? Does, does regional interconnection matter? And so some of the take backs we've taken from this. Um, in a regional or secondary market, don't be surprised if your traffic has the trombone. Um, we've learned that in Phoenix, that connecting from our service in Phoenix to another server in Phoenix likely goes back through Los Angeles. Um, there, there's not a lot that can be done to fix that except opening the interconnection. Um, user ex experience suffers. The users in these markets definitely have a lesser experience than in other markets. Um, where interconnection is better between networks and, and more open. Peering can help, and, and this is really the big saving grace for all of this, and we are in the peering track, so peering is good. Going into these markets, um, like I said, in Dublin, connecting to INEX gives you the visibility of that local market. Um, for the networks which are there and are connected to the tier ones and the I IXP, you can go there and you can peer with them. You can take that traffic off transit and interconnect well. But things are getting better. Um, w as I say this, I know that more interconnection is being turned up in some of these markets. Um, Phoenix has now at least two tier ones interconnecting with each other, which is better than it was before. Um, but there's still a long way to go. Um, still, there's so much uh, disconnect in these markets and, and that needs to be improved. Um, that wraps it up. Is there any questions? Thank you, Tom. So, any questions? No questions? Okay, and I, I have a question. So I'm curious about the situation in Tokyo you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, what is the uh, reason? <laughs> if, oh, yeah, if possible, yeah, please tell. So I, this is where an incumbent in the market doesn't want to open their interconnection in their home market. Um, whereby they, they may peer in, in a remote market, but they refuse to peer in their local market. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it's really a political and, and money issue. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's a very touching one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Okay. So thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, next up, the pairing personal, the second session. Uh, we have, I actually wrote down a list. Uh, we have Baidu, we have Microsoft, we have Twitch, we have Globe, we have Limelight. If you would come up on stage. Can we have the slides, please? Thank you. I do first.
Bien, tengo la unidad. Sí, ya. Microsoft. Oh, there you go. Yeah, hello guys. Uh, my name is Yongxin and I work for Baidu. Uh, and probably you guys know Baidu is a, a search company in China. So we do have some presence outside of China to make our users feel better. Uh, we have uh, two pubs, one in Singapore and one in Hong Kong. Uh, we are connected to uh, Equinix and HKIX, uh, which you can find from the Peering DB record. Uh, in addition, we define ourselves as uh, both uh, content and uh, eyeball. So we, I put balanced there because, uh, as you know, because we, we provide a search, so we crawl. So we welcome all the ISPs and uh, content providers to get connected with us. That's it. Thank you. Microsoft. Hello, I'm Noraini from uh, Microsoft. So, um, um, AS8075, um, we are open for uh, peering, um, and uh, we have, uh, we're connecting to uh, 95 more uh, IXs. So, in uh, New Zealand, we are connecting to AIP, um, Wellington uh, Internet Exchange, and also um, Auckland Internet Exchange. So, and then uh, you can send a request through our peering form, and it will get you uh, pretty fast connecting to us. So, contact peering. And then, uh, sorry, Twitch, but this is uh, the peering form, so you can go to the URL and then just put in the request. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Meng Kun and I work for Twitch. So we are AS46489. Um, just introduction, Twitch is a leading platform for live streaming of video games. And every month we have more than 100 unique viewers as well as more than 1.7 million broadcasters. So we, are pre uh, we have a record in Peering DB and we are present in multiple locations. For APEC, we are in Hong Kong, Seoul, Tokyo, and Sydney, and we are exploring new places like Singapore as well. So um, for peering policy, we are, we are, it's listed as selective, but uh, if you are an eyeball network, we will be more than happy to work with you and to peer with you. So um, there are four of us here. Uh, we are all wearing our very nice purple Twitch t-shirt and very vis visible. So come forward and say hi and we can discuss. Thank you. Hi, I am Achi Achenza from the Philippines. I am Martin's imaginary friend earlier. Thank you for confirming I'm, I'm a real person. So we have an open pairing policy with a smiley face and location at nine IX points uh, in LA, Seattle, Japan, Hong Kong, and Singapore. We also have a pairing DB account. Uh, side note to the pairing DB, yeah, we are, we're one of the first one who adopted Peering DB in the Philippines. And uh, to Aaron, uh, can't commit anything right now on that, but I have your, you have, uh, I got you in the Philippines. Uh, send an email to peering at globenet.com.ph and I'll peer with you. Thank you. This is Goro from Limelight Networks. We are two of us here. It's me, you can see, and my colleague Sajari on the picture there. Uh, we are AS22822 globally, but the nearest pop from New Zealand in Sydney uses AS38622. Uh, we are content. We have a selective peering policy. Uh, we list all our peering exchanges plus PNI uh, points on peering DB. Uh, you can email my entire team or um, to Sajari who looks after our APAC uh, stuff uh, directly. Uh, he just had to step out right now for a maintenance window. So 
uh, you know, you can find him or I put his picture up there so that uh, you, if you see him, you can talk to him or talk to me today or tomorrow or day after. Uh, thanks. Can we get the next slide? All right, uh, we have one more peering personal session on the next round, and I believe this concludes the second session of the uh, peering forum. <laughs>